Let's now finish up our balloon experience or interactive demo. And to do our quick recap, we have our balloon script and we've defined two public variables. We have the scale factor and we want to multiply the scale by that number each time that the user clicks. And we have the maximum scale. Once the scale reaches that value, the balloon will be destroyed. So if we go to our code, uh, we're actually not going to use the start method here. So I'm going to delete that. And what we need to do here is be able to access the scale. And if we can access the scale, we need to be able to in increase this value. And also we need to be able to check if we've if we passed the maximum value, the maximum scale value. So I'm writing all of this in what's called pseudocode. It's basically uh, describing an algorithm in plain human language in English in this case. So we want to access the scale and we want to increase the value of the scale and we want to check if we've if we pass that number and if so uh, we want to destroy the balloon. And I've used the word destroy for a reason that you will see later. So if if not uh, if, if that is not the case we are not going to do anything. So first step how can we access the scale? If we go to unity we you will see that the scale of an object is part of its transfer com transform component. So we need to find a way to access our transform component. And luckily for us, in Unity, there's a quick way to access the transform component. Since we're using mono behavior, we have direct access to the transform component by using um, just simply the just simply typing transform, and that gives us the transform component. And what exactly is the transform component? If I hover the mouse, you'll see that it is of class transform. And if we go to the documentation, for transform, you will see that there's obviously very a lot of information. And understanding the transform well is one of the most important things when you're developing with Unity. We want to be able to access the scale. So if I go here through the different variables that are available, I will run into this local scale variable. And this is what we need to use to access and to modify the scale of our balloon. Now, the scale itself, it is a value of, uh, it is of type vector3. In the next lecture, we are covering vectors in a lot of details. So for now, let's just assume that vector3 is simply a, a type of object that gives us access to values x, y, and z. So that is all we need to know for now about vectors. And also that if we multiply a vector3 by a number, we'll be multiplying x, y, and z. As I mentioned in the next lecture, we're going to talk about vectors in a lot of detail. So. We have here an example of how to access this. And we're actually going to combine these two operations. We're going, to access, we're going to increase the scale. Increase the scale. So for that, we're going to type transform.localScale using order completion. And we want to multiply this local scale. The new local scale will be the old local scale multiplied by scale factor. And that will work. But when you have something like this, when you're incrementing or multiplying something by uh, it's, uh, assigning the, the result as itself times something or, or divided by something, you can just type a short version, which is, so I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to keep that there. Simply the, the operation sign equal. That is the same as the above. And it, this is just a way, better way to write it. So that should already allow us to increase the size of our balloon. Let's go and play our game and see what happens. I'm going to press play. And if I click, you can see that the scale is being increased. And it's been increased all the way to any number I want because we haven't really set that maximum yet. And this also allows me to show you the game view. And if we go to the scene view, we can, uh, if we select our balloon and press F, focus on that, we can actually see how it's showing the, the values of game mode. If we stop the game, it will reset back to the original values. And we can change change its position and change its scale and do anything that we want. 
But once we stop the game, it is set back to the original values. And let's press F to go come closer. Okay, so let's now uh, make use of that limitation and make our balloon disappear or destroy our balloon if we've reached that, that amount. I'm gonna use now what's called an if statement. So I'm gonna type if and check for a condition. What condition do we want to check? We want to check that transform dot local scale and uh, some number here needs, we need to check whether it's greater or equal than that maximum scale. But see how it is complaining because this is a vector and we're comparing a vector with a float number. What we need to do here is access either X, Y, or Z. So if you go to the documentation vector three, you will see that vector three has variables, has public variables. It has X, Y, and Z. So we can access the component. And since we're, incre we're increasing all of them, we can just pick any X will do. So if this is true, if that statement is true, then I'm going to execute some code in here. So I'm going to put this in here. And what I'm going to do is just type destroy and I'm going to type game object. So there's a lot happening here. We're typing destroy, which is a method that allows us to destroy an object. And game object is just like we have that reference to the transform. We also have the reference to the actual game object itself. So this object here, when we type game object in a script that gives us access to the game object of the game. So if I save that and I go back to the game and run the game, you will see now that as I increase the size, once I reach a certain point, it will disappear because we've, we basically killed it. If we stop the game, everything goes back to normal. So to summarize what we've done here, we've accessed the transform component. There is a way that we'll cover later to access any component within a game object because the transform is so commonly used. It's so important. There is this shortcut, which is just typing transform from transform. We're accessing its local scale. And as we saw in the documentation, the local scale is of type vector three. Type vector three allows us to have uh, represents a value of X, Y, and Z. And we do want to modify the scale in X, Y, and Z. So what we've done is multiply that by a scale factor and that multiplies X, Y, and Z, all of them. So we can take grab all any of them and compare it to the maximum scale that we've defined. Notice how this is a greater than, and then we add the equal to make it greater uh, than or equal to a certain number. If that is so, then we call this function, which this method, which allows us to basically destroy the object and Unity takes care of that destroying process for you. We are going to have a challenge now. So go to your script and add the start method back. And inside of that method, create an if statement to check whether the value of scale factor is smaller than or equal to one. If that is the case, show a message in the console saying that if the value is too small, it should be bigger. Otherwise we're not increasing the size of our balloon. We're actually making it smaller and smaller. So have a try and then I will show you the solution. All right, you had your try and now let's implement this in our code. So I'm going to add the start method back. So void start, that's going to create it for me. I like deleting this private here. All right, that is just my coding preference, that my style preference. You don't have to do it if you like having that private keyword in there. So what we said was that we were going to create an if statement. So we type if, and what is it that we're going to check? We're going to check whether this value scale factor is less or equal than one. If that is the case, we are going to print a message that says scale factor is too small. Let's save that, go to unity, 
and let's try this out. So I'm going to go here and change this to one. Whoops, one, I press play. And it says that the scale factor is too small. Actually, if I click, nothing happens because um, the, the scale is just being multiplied by one. So it's not being modified. What if I set a smaller number, 0 0.5, and I press play, you'll now see that we are actually making that smaller and smaller. And just to make sure that everything works fine, let's set it to two. And now we can increase it and it disappears just like before. So that was the solution of the challenge.